Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay, and of course, our first impressions of the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, Jake, and today we're talking about The Last of Us Part One. Yes, that's what it's called now. This is Naughty Dog rebuilding the original game for the PlayStation 5, taking advantage of its features and graphics. It's significant because it has been billed by them as more of a remake, not just a simple up-resolution remaster. Now, I just replayed The Last of Us again just a little bit over a year ago, and as you guys know, I strongly felt that this release wasn't really necessary. Thankfully, I think I've been proven wrong. Unlike some remakes and remasters, this one feels like it really got the right amount of love, you know, the care it needed. There are a couple of little things I wish they had added, but I still really immediately got sucked back in and binged the hell out of it. I just couldn't help it. But you're also probably not gonna be surprised to hear that I think the price is steep. Everybody's wallet and priorities are different. I don't always talk about game prices here. Some people will want this right away. Some people will wait for a sale. Some people think it should only cost $2. You know, I didn't get it early from Sony. I went out and I paid 75 US dollars for a game that I played many times that was originally released back in like 2013. But I'll say like whether you're die hard and you buy it right now or you wait for a sale, whoever you are, the bottom line is that this is a really good definitive version of this game, like this now classic game. And if you've never played it before, I will say consider yourself lucky that you get to play this version. First and foremost, the visuals. Now you can play it in resolution mode with full 4K and a, you know, very above 30 frames per second frame rate or performance mode with a still respectable resolution and a locked 60 frames a second. Interestingly enough, you can also take advantage of an unlocked frame rate for both modes if you have the TV to support it, which I did and it was, it was pretty nice. <laughs> but I think at this point for a game this age, the performance was a given. It's really the detail overhaul that impressed me the most and is what I think ultimately really drew me back in. Environments really look incredible. Like layout wise, they're not as complex as part two and you definitely know Notice, but like art style wise, there are tons of new details worth experiencing, you know, denser foliage, more detailed desks and clutter inside, completely different wall textures, lighting flourishes, reflections, flowing water, little tweaks in the color palette or atmospheric effects are cool. And they also didn't bother me like in terms of an artistic change. Like, you know, you ever play a game that was remade or remastered and like an area or the sky is completely a different color, like stuff like that. I, I wasn't offended here with any creative choices or any differences, you know, the feel is completely retained and also just improved, in my opinion. The game already just had so many stunner scenes, you know, empty neighborhoods, crumbling cities, overgrown buildings, sunken streets. They're all just better here, right from the start. Like you'll notice Boston has a bit more detail and flourishes to the building and architecture that make it feel a little bit more Boston-y. You know, I can only draw from my own experience here. And for me, the real kicker was the redone characters. Like I'm playing for the story. I like the tale enough that I've wanted to experience it multiple times over these years. And here with way more in-depth facial animations and detail, it makes a hell of a difference. Every character looks and feels more like a real person and matches the quality of the second game. Even a lot of NPCs suddenly look really damn great. I'm talking like background characters going from zero to hero. But the faces for the main characters, dude, like many pivotal scenes are heightened thanks to a more realistic uh, human glint in the eye of a character. You know, a facial twitch here and there, stuff like that. The big moments, the big emotion is sold way, way more. Everybody will have a scene where like it, it really kicks in for them. And for me, it was a scene between Tess, Joel, and Ellie early on. Uh, the original game already had really great performances behind it and some great faces and facial animation, but like, I don't know how they did it here, but they blew it out of the water. Not to sound like a hype man or anything, but like, yeah, for, for me, it was really significant. Joel's eyes are almost creepy. Like they're a bit bigger, but also way more expressive. Every moment is, is so much better for it. And it might sound a little corny, but like I found myself really excited for every cutscene to kick in just to see what was up. Now with a modern TV with good HDR and some well contrasted colors and deep blacks, all that really helped make it feel like a new thing. And on the gameplay front, Naughty Dog did rework things, but 
I was never like a Last of Us speedrunner or anything, so I can't tell you minute details, but just going by feel, it does feel a little faster and more responsive. I feel like I can zip around as Joel and aim and vault over cover and manage the backpack all a, like a wee bit quicker. And the dual sense features are pretty in line with what the second game got updated with. You know, the shotgun cock with the vibration is very cool. The tension on the triggers with the bow really works and kind of adds to the gameplay feel and subtle stuff like feeling the rain and the little haptic vibration like it definitely goes hard with all this dual sense feature stuff and it'll probably kill the battery life really quick but hey I, extra immersion i guess now what i loved was seeing them bring the gun customization stuff from the second game so like now joel when he's on a workbench he'll disassemble and tweak a gun in front of you as you upgrade it and it's just like a bunch of satisfying animations and the guns will look noticeably different as you upgrade them as joel takes a tool and does something to a gun, you see it in real time. Gameplay wise, I do wish they added a little bit more. Like when they announced it and how they were talking about it, I was kind of hoping for a dodge button like from two and I kind of miss that here. I know Joel is a bigger, older, a little bit thicker dude, a little slower, but he'd still be able to dodge a little bit. Crawling, I don't think would work much because of like the design of the original game here, but a dodge would have been cool. And one thing worth pointing out is that it does just still play remarkably well. The stealth sections are so incredibly intense and playing it with headphones and really good sound just really adds to that. But also just the desperation of every single encounter. And if you're playing on a harder difficulty mode, it can become just like white knuckle crazy stuff. And with the movement feeling good, the shooting feeling good. If you're playing it for the first time, you'll definitely get why some people go crazy for the actual core gameplay of this game. People will absolutely play every difficulty get every trophy and just go hard. And that's because the core is just well made. And there are a bunch of new accessibility options that uh, will seemingly really help some folks out. I'm not an accessibility expert, but it seems like more people will be able to play this game how they want or however they can, and I like that. The only quote missing thing is factions multiplayer, which you know the original game had. It's not here. Now, as you know, Naughty Dog has bigger plans for like this whole new big standalone Last of Us multiplayer thing, but I'm sure some folks are gonna miss it here because that was a massively slept on multiplayer mode. That was, it was pretty tight. I wish it was in here. I'm not like mad or anything, I get it, uh, but I also just wanted to shout it out because factions ruled, it was, it was great. Oh, and the photo mode is beefed up. Like there are a bunch of more options, ways to tweak the lighting and stuff. And I found myself firing up the mode a lot, like way more than I expected. I'm not like super creative, but I was having fun capturing stuff and messing around. I, I wish there was an option though for uh, changing characters facial expressions though like you know the god of war photo mode you can make kratos look like a doofus like kind of wanted that i couldn't find that in the settings but like there's still a good amount of stuff here and i expect the community to go nuts good luck somebody out there make something cool make my new phone wallpaper anyway uh so you are getting multiple difficulty modes the ability to replay with different skins and cool cheats enabled like one hit kills and stuff and the add-on expansion also uh, left behind which dives into ellie a little bit more that is a good amount of stuff like if you're not familiar, like that's a good amount of stuff to keep you busy. Now, I could spend time waxing nostalgic or waxing poetic or whatever on the game itself and the story and everything, but most of you have probably already experienced the game or heard enough people talk about it. You know, it's a solid one. It's filled with memorable moments, scary, gory stuff, heartbreaking characters, grim reality and moments of like beauty and wonder. You strangle dudes while looking them in the eye. You hit people with bricks, you blow up creatures and you journey across a post-apocalyptic United States. There's not much else like this in video games and now it just looks and feels noticeably better. Like I said, for me, it's not half-assed and it's actually got some of the love behind it that we can't say about every remake or remaster. Price conversation aside, doesn't matter. Like I think they did a good job here. But of course, that's a before you buy. You know how this works by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. And now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. Have you never played The Last of Us? I'd definitely like to know uh, what your expectations are or like if this is you're gonna be your first time, if you're picking it up immediately, or if you're someone who's played it a million times and can blast through this game, how are you feeling? What are your thoughts? Let's talk about anything The Last of Us down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this and maybe it helped you out at all, enjoyed seeing this gameplay, click on the like button's all you gotta do. It really helps us out. And if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But hey, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.